Hola, bienvenidos a Buenos Aires. Bienvenidos. Hello, a Casa welcome to Rosado, Buenos Aires. Welcome to the Pink House, the presidential palace, for an exclusive interview with the newly elected president of the Republic of Argentina, Mauricio Macri. Mr. President, thank you very much. It's a pleasure, and also welcome to you. Thank you. Thank you for accepting this interview. My colleague from Radio France Internationale, Alejo Shapire. Hello, Mr. President. My first question concerns the fact that 10 years after George Bush's visit to the Summit of the Americas, which marked a decade of no meetings, in fact, of the United States in Latin America, Barack Obama is now going to Cuba and he is going to come here to Argentina. This is a time when the governments of Argentina and Venezuela are weakened. Is this a new phase beginning between Latin America and the United States from here on? We certainly hope so. That's the idea. We're opening perhaps a new chapter in Argentina's relationship with the world. The visit of the presidents of Bulgaria, the prime minister of Italy, the president of France and the American president all represent proof of affection, proof of the interest that these countries have in us that we may turn the page and start a new chapter in our relationships in order to build a constructive story together. And we're ready for it. In Argentina, we have taken the decision to follow uh, the decision for dialogue and internally and externally, and we look forward to these meetings. At the time, there was criticism of the very close relations between Argentina and the United States. How can we characterize these new relations? These relations will be intelligent, mature, and guided by shared interests. What I'm looking for is to create trust, and we certainly hope that we will be able to look towards new options for our country's future. And I want, I have committed to Argentinians to eliminating poverty from Argentina, and in order to do so, we will have to make many different efforts in a world that faces many specific challenges. Creating jobs is one of the key stakes for all countries. The French president will also be coming to Argentina after the Italian prime minister. It's almost two decades since this uh, type of uh, visit took place. I think the uh, last visit of the American president was 26 years ago. So this displays what you're talking about, but very specifically with the French president. Are you going to, you're going to sign approximately 22 bilateral agreements, but I suppose that you will also talk about negotiations between the Mercosur and the European Union. It's now more than 15 years that these negotiations have been underway, but everything seems to be at a standstill. So is there at last hope that we are going to come up with a solution quickly? Absolutely. The fact is that I hope that since it all rests on France's shoulders because the, the issue that has held us back has always been agriculture, and since France is a major player in agriculture in Europe. It really depends on President Hollande, and I hope that when he visits, we will find an agreement in order to start a process which will last, of course, a long time, but it has yet to start. So the challenge is to get going, and I'm extremely enthusiastic, and I hope that that aspect, in addition to the exchanges in science and technology, in business and cultural exchanges, which we have always had, as a matter of fact, we have always had uh, close cultural ties between Buenos Aires and Paris. I was mayor of Buenos Aires, and we always had strong support from the French government for our cultural exchanges, and therefore I hope that these historic ties will help us to create more uh, investment between France and Argentina, and French investment will be welcomed warmly in Argentina, and we hope that it will help create jobs for Argentinians. Specifically, when do you hope that this treaty will be signed between the European Union and the Mercosur? Being realistic. Over the next 30 days. A new 
chapter or a difficult chapter uh, concerns the Falkland Islands. Now, a few days ago, the British Defence Minister, Michael Fallon, came to the Falkland Islands and he said that the United Kingdom would invest in defense facilities. He said that he would never negotiate on the sovereignty of the Falklands. There was not much response here in Buenos Aires. Does this mean that on this issue as well, there is now a wish on your administration's part to change things and perhaps at long last to come up with a solution to the problem? We are very much committed to finding a solution in line with our legitimate claims, as we see, uh, based on dialogue. And that is what I suggested to Prime Minister Cameron during our meeting in Davos. Without, without giving up on our convictions, we believe we have room for dialogue and to rekindle our relationship through other fields. This is the case as well between the United Kingdom and Spain, which has a uh, similar Does that mean that you think it's possible to find a solution? We will have to discuss things for a long time, but we have to start on the right foot. In a few days' time, you are meeting the Pope, Pope Francis. I would like to know what you expect from this meeting, bearing in mind that relations have been somewhat distant. I sense that we have a good relationship. We have already been in office together. When I was mayor of Buenos Aires, he was a bishop of Buenos Aires, and we worked together closely for eight years, so I know him quite well. We worked for common goals together. We did a lot of good work. When he took up his uh, new position, I was one of the first to visit him, and I also met him on another occasion when my daughter wanted to meet him. And there is clearly mutual respect. Therefore, I'm very enthusiastic to have this opportunity to meet him again. I have a tremendous amount of respect for him, and I think he will be able to provide me with very useful advice on the tasks Argentina awaits. What's the situation regarding domestic policy? Those who say, for example, that the Pope helps more the opposition, talking, for example, about Milagro Sala, whom, to whom he sent a rosary, for example, a medal. These are incorrect interpretations. That said, the head of the Catholic University of Argentina uh, published a letter explaining what happened there. He explained that the Pope can grant a sinner the possibility of repenting through, uh, through prayer, but I don't want to interpret what the Pope does. I'm simply telling you what Mr. Fernandez was saying. The Pope spoke about other issues as well, and he spoke about the Mexicanization of Argentina, referring to the issue of the drugs trade and of how the drug trade has penetrated Argentina. You have criticized the previous administration for its work. You have said that it was either incompetent or it was um, an accomplice. It's a priority for you to combat the drug trade, but in Latin America, very often, Combating the drug trade also means working with the United States. Are you going to work very closely with the United States on this particular issue? Are you going to talk about this with President Obama when he comes in March? Certainly. We fully intend to work with the United States, but we would also like to work with uh, Brazil, with Colombia, with Peru, with Chile and with all of the countries that are hit by the same phenomenon. The growth in the drugs trade means global uh, targets, fighting against the drugs trade, against terrorism, against climate change, making sure that the technological revolution creates new opportunities and leads to more inclusion and more solidarity. All of these uh, fights also led by the Pope as well as by countries around the world. And Argentina wishes to work on all of these issues, including drug, uh, the drug trade. And if this is a concern which we have tried to fight from, the, from day one.
the fact that the United States may intervene on this issue in Latin America creates a lot of controversy, not only the presence of the United States. Is this not a problem for you? Quite the contrary. The, they provide support in intelligence, logistics, support, training. There is a variety of support. And as you said, the previous government did nothing against this phenomenon for 12 years. All they did was to look on and sometimes be an accomplice to the systematic expansion of the drugs trade. And being an accomplice is being a player. I'd like to talk about an issue that's been widely discussed in Argentina around the world. Alberto Nisman, the prosecutor who was inquiring on the attack against the AMIA. Argentina accused Iran but the Kishner government published uh, an agreement with Iran in order to inquire jointly. The prosecutor challenged the memorandum, and a few days later, he was found dead just over one year ago. Do you think that this was an assassination or was it suicide? I think that the worst thing about this is that we don't know what happened. And I committed to assist the justice system in order to investigate freely and fully if Nisman's uh, denunciations are proven to be true, that there was an agreement that we're unaware of that led to that memorandum, which no longer exists, incidentally, following a decision by my government. And second, why did the prosecutor die? We need to find out these facts. And as I said, this stage in the history of Argentina will be built upon truth, and we have to go to the, go to the bottom of the issue. Do you think there are links between Argentina and Iran that we are going to discover a bit later? The memorandum was unconstitutional, and what's more, it was prepared behind the backs of the citizens of Argentina. We want to know why and whether what Nisman said was true or not. Let's move on to economic matters. In New York, there was the announcement of an imminent agreement with the, what are known as the vulture funds. What can you tell us about this? We hope to put an end to all of the conflicts that Argentina has been dragging with it for years. The only thing that these different conflicts have led to has been uh, stagnating growth for four years across the country. And we want to free our energies in order to promote investment, create jobs. And I am optimistic. An agreement has been submitted to the courts in New York. We have shown a very healthy, constructive, open attitude. Do you think there will be a quick resolution? I'm always optimistic. I think there is a deadline that's been set by the end of the month, the end of February, in order to find an agreement by the 29th of February. The judge stated that we have until the 29th, and this means significant progress. The judge also said that if we pass the laws making it possible to achieve settlement, then the barriers will be lifted and we will be able to rekindle trade and look for funding abroad. After two months in office, your uh, the bad administration has been the main concern of the Argentine people. How are you going to fight against this, bearing in mind that we cannot have a single statistic that accurately re reflects inflation? Well, the very first thing we did was to free the National Statistical Office in order for them to be able to once again publish their monthly report. The problem was that it was broken down to such an extent that we had to turn to the best experts in the field have, that have been working now for some time, and we hope that by the month of June we will have clear information. At the moment we are working uh, strongly to keep inflation down, but in order to do that we have to cut down waste and unnecessary public spending. We have to stop, for instance, publishing money which has meant that it is the weakest that suffer the most from 
this perverse tax that is imposed by an incompetent government knowing nothing about management. On that very point, there have been thousands of dismissals in the public sector in different parts of the country. And according to the trade unions, there were also tens of thousands of dismissals in the private sector. How do you respond to that? What we've tried to do is to re-establish the value of the state. Without a state, without a government, Argentina will not be able to move forward. Therefore, we have to re-establish training and, and for public service. We have to introduce new technologies and stop using the government as spoils of war for politics. Those who gain power name their close friends to uh, office and are, the same is true of the, their successors. What we have to do is to build better houses, better ports, guarantee access to energy. And these expenditures are important. Otherwise, we're not contributing to growth. We have to have a government that is in service to the population and provides answers. The dismissals in the private sector were linked to uh, stagnating growth in our country, and the previous government was afraid to act. It mostly focused on the effects rather than the causes. Therefore, the government laid off and dismissed without wondering why we weren't uh, selling more, whereas there was actually a lack of this uh, dialogue with the world and the problem of inflation grew. And given this malaise, you have set up an agreement, which is a framework, regulating um, the right to demonstrate. At the same time, we're hearing about the criminalization of demonstrations. I'm referring here to Milagro Sala case. How do you answer those criticisms? In the case of Milagro Sala, first I want to say that I very much respect the independence of the judiciary. There is a ju judiciary in the province of Kukuni which, which led an investigation following uh, some uh, requests, and every day Argentinians face new surprises. We learn that there are more and more crimes that are uncovered, but that does not fall within the remit of my responsibilities. I am re responsible at a national level. What we would like is to have a more respectful uh, system, respectful of everyone, and those that wish to demonstrate may do so without infringing upon the rights of those people who want to go to work or go to school, because we know that the aim is not to block other people from doing their jobs, it just creates more so unemployment. your administration is not in the process of conducting a witch hunt against Kirchner supporters. I committed from day one to bring together Argentinians. I despise the fact that certain Kirchner supporters in power tried to keep our government from acting, but my task is not to persecute Kirchner backers, but to work towards greater growth in Argentina and to create jobs for Argentinians. What the government has been doing has been to get rid of those that had no place there and that were not acting in the defense of Argentinians. So there was no longer a state in Argentina? No, there wasn't. The fact is that the government was incredible because Kirchnerism spoke about the state for 12 years and all they did was take it apart piece by piece. We have no statistics whatsoever. Argentina is in debt. The government also hid the most important, uh, sorry, has wasted the most important source of revenue. Uh, for the state because there were record prices over the last 10 years for commodities. And since there was n no government able to make the most of that opportunity, it was missed. Regarding human rights, we have seen that in this area there's been a, a departure from Kirchnerism. You've criticized Venezuela, for example. This would never have been possible under the previous government. Do you think that it is important to criticize countries, even left-wing countries in America, on this particular issue? 
are you going to continue criticizing Venezuela, Cuba, or other countries? Because it would appear that on the continent, there's always a fear. This, the situation is different depending on uh, the point of view. My goal is to defend human rights independently of the situation. In Venezuela, there are, there are clear violations of human rights, people who are thrown in jail without reason for no other reason than that they are political opponents. And I want to defend them because that is a commitment that we made to Venezuelans. Venezuela was the country that provided the greatest defense of Argentina during its military dictatorship. It hosted the largest number of Argenti Argentinian exiles because not all Argentinians were able or had the means to go to Paris. And Venezuelans welcomed us with open arms, and the Venezuelan community stood up to defend our rights and our freedoms, and therefore we have a debt and cannot turn a blind eye to what is happening there. I'm therefore extremely pleased to have spoken the truth. That was what I committed to. There's also an issue that is linked with that of human rights, namely disappeared persons in this country. People have disappeared. We always hear about the figure of 30,000 persons. Some people have said, no, it wasn't 30,000, it was 8,000. The National Commission on the Disappeared Persons talks about 9,000, but it would seem that the figure of 30,000 is a taboo figure. You cannot talk about it, otherwise people get very angry. Should we talk about it or should it be left uh, as it is? What point is there to speak about the figure? What we have to be aware of is the severity of the events and of what took place. There were some investigations according to which there were nine to 12,000 missing persons, others said 30,000. What I'm interested in and what I have committed to is that this type of event never happened again in Argentina. Therefore, what's important is that we be able to live in a democracy, a democracy which finds solutions to the problems of its population. There are many challenges that we have to face, challenges linked to human rights, to uh, people who have no access to housing, uh, who have no access to sanitation, to uh, running water, to public education. And that is something all Argentinians have understood. We understand what took place during the dictatorship, therefore it's not crucial to discuss the number of missing persons, but the Last values. question. There are people in this country, as in others, who said that, yes, Macri, it's the imperialist right. He's an agent of the United States. He's not working for Argentina, but he's working for the United States. Mario Macri is a dreamer, full of passion, who loves his country and who will do everything within his power to make sure that Argentinians have a better outlook in the future. I love my country and my people, and I put my faith in Argentinians. And on behalf of them, I will make sure that I have a better relationship with countries from around the world and defend their interests. And one last word, or last question. If I ask you to choose between Maradona and Messi, for a final, maybe Maradona, but to play on Sundays, definitely Messi. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you for agreeing to meet us. Thank you for watching this interview on France 24 and Radio France International.